Oh, your stomach, your your stomach lurches as the as the spirit passes into you, a heavy presence sitting somewhere deep within your soul. You simultaneously feel like driver and passenger as time folds in on itself, and you experience the moment after the murder that took place the night before. You don't so much see the elf and troll as feel them. Meticulous elf. You idiot! There's no need to anesthetize him! He's already dead! Slovenly troll. Sorry, doctor. I usually put them out before you go to work on them at the hospital. Did this one volunteer too? He, he lets out... Meticulous elf lets out a little giggle. Yes, they all volunteer. Hmm. Just like I volunteered for this life of butchery. Our presence grows weary. Show the fourth magical fetish to the spirits. Oh, all right, fine. One of the spirits stares at the objects for a long, long time. It lets out a sigh of relief as if reunited with a lost loved one after a long absence. It closes its eyes. Its face, once a mask of pain and despair, appears hopeful. May I depart, Seeker? I wish the rest I have long waited for. Yes, go now and rest, spirit. Thank you. With the spirits gone, the young shaman releases her hold on the magical tether connecting her to the other realm. She reels from the backlash, or perhaps from the emotional toll of knowing her brother's last moments. They saw him, or were with him when he died. You alright? She takes a series of controlled breaths, only shuddering with the first few. No, but I will be. I, I don't want that for him. Not what those poor souls have endured. My brother deserves to be free. Hmm. He will be, once we find his killer. Yes, the elf and the troll. We have to find that piece of... We have to find that piece of the elf the spirit spoke of. It's our best hope of stopping this. Okay, so some, some trace of the elf has been left behind. Somewhere. Hmm. They mean he, he he used the warehouse men's room earlier, so <laughs> Aura of his life force is still here. Okay, yeah, back to where the body, the body was. Victim's body. Not our victim's body, the other victim. Right. Not, 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 not the numerous people we've killed here. Ooh, item picked up. Blood. Ooh, item added. DNA evidence. Blood. This is what the spirits wanted us to find. The piece of my brother's killer. <laughs> it's not much, but it's enough. She scowls at it. Look looking every bit like she intends to reach through the small sample and dismember its owner from her. And perhaps she can. Let's see, can that, is that enough to target a spell? Can you track him with that? Is that enough to target a spell? All I need is a drop. And adequate time. Hmm. But I'm still... But I'm feeling quite drained. I'll need to rest before I can try anything so involved. When I'm able, I'll commune with Bear, consult the spirits, and do what must be done. But in the meantime, you might take some portion of the sample to pursue a more conventional means of attack. I have some friends who might be able to help. Good. Let me know if you can learn anything about this elf and troll pair. And should you find him, I want to be there when they are brought low. I want to see the light leave their eyes. For my brother. I'll see, I'll see what I can do. Now, did that... Silhouette of that elf look at all familiar to you? It did, but I can't place it. Okay, well, that's fine. Transition to a new location. And 
Back to the seamstress union, I guess. After hours. When you return to the seamstress's union in the early hours of the morning, it seems a completely different place. Bereft of the normal crowd that taunts it, the bar feels desolate, almost abandoned. It's eerie, like the back hallways of hotels and shopping malls. But you finally have a break in your case, a sample of the Ripper's blood. You just need to find someone to help you analyze it. Being in a, like, hmm. public place, like, after hours when no one is there, it is kind of unnerving, at least to me. Yeah. Especially if it's really late at night. We are. Without its colorful staff, cast of regulars, and posing tourists, the Union feels hollow. The front bar and lounge are deserted, except for a handful of janitors. Alrighty. So, no one to mix me up in Manhattan, I guess. Hey, I wonder if that incredibly depressed, like, un unenthusiastic male stripper is still there. <laughs> oh, even he's gone! Oh, wow. Gathered around the intimate back bar, Mrs. Kubota and her coterie gather for breakfast, with the lady herself doing the cooking. The smell of soy calf and something resembling sausages fills the room. <laughs> soy calf was like soy-based coffee, basically. What's in these sausages, someone asks. <laughs> Talk to Mr. Clue, eh? A.K.A. Satan. Evening, sir. What's the word around town, Mr. Cluet? There's been more talk of the Ripper killings. Some people are saying they're hate crimes on account of the victims all being human. There's more to it than just that. I thought exactly. People are just too quick to label something a hate crime. Check the census. The city is, the city is still 66% humans. Close your eyes and throw a rock. You're more than likely to hit a human. Doesn't make it a hate crime. Still a crime, though. And that should be enough. This is the first real rise you've seen out of Mr. Clue, but he reins himself in with a roll of his thick shoulders and a smoothing of his jacket. Don't worry. I'm not going to say start throwing rocks. Wouldn't want to reinforce the stereotype. I'll leave you to your business, sir. It's, it's, it's come up before, but, you know, you notice he got a bit heated about the idea that it was like a racial thing. And I remember before, the stuff like, there's a lot of like, uh, with, like, you know, metahumans, like, you know, in his case, trolls. There's, I mean, there's a huge amount of prejudice and whatnot. So, like, the, right. so, the, so, so like if people started to actually believe that this was, like, metahumans systematically targeting humans, you know, that could be, like, serious trouble for, for him or people he cares about. Right. Mrs. Kubota. Yeah. Oh, hi -oh. Would you like some... She stops. Forgive me, oh my, but you look like hell. Long night. And she looks you over, noting the signs of your nocturnal activities. She nods. Any run you can walk away from is a good run. So I've been told. I can tell you've been busy, and I can see by the look on your face that there's something you need. Is this about the Ripper? Eh, we can, we can trust, we can trust her. Yep. I found some DNA evidence, and I and need help analyzing it. CSI Seattle now. That is excellent. I will unlock the piano so you may go downstairs. I am certain someone in the safe house will be able to help you, if they are awake. It is likely that you will visit the Matrix before the day is done. Whoa. May I take a sausage? <laughs> take the whole plate! For the road. I was hoping that would get added to our inventory or something, but no such luck. Oh. Okay. But let's head on downstairs. To the crime lab. Ah, oh, the digit the digital world. You've been doing a lot of legwork on this job, but it's going to require a trip to cyberspace and back to ID the Ripper. The Matrix. The cyber anal an cybernetic analog of inside the grid. The worldwide computer network. A digital world. Information brought to life. Inside cyberspace, your av avatar does all the work while your meat body is left behind. All around your avatar are pathways to other nodes filled with data. 
High C, counter-intrusion programs, and other jacked-in runners. Cyberspace has as many dangers as the meat world, and more. Locked doors, security countermeasures, and black IC that can fry a Decker's brain. Every movement you make in the Matrix can be tracked, if you aren't careful. Get dump shocked out and your brain gets fuzzy for a bit. Get hit by an enemy Decker and you can die. This one of the biggest influences on this, as on a lot of Cybertrunk, uh, Cybertrunk, as on a lot of Cyberpunk was uh, William Gibson's Neuromancer. Okay. All right. Oh, D David Fry the second. What's he doing in the medical office here? Morning. You look like you. I don't know. This is the uh, like the cyberware salesman guy. Oh right, right. Or not the cyberware salesman, but like the the like the the, the cyber deck salesman decking technology stuff. Morning. You look like you've been up all night. <coughs> Looks like you've seen some action too. Where's Doc Castle? Sleep, I assume. You need a med kit or something? You need someone to analyze a DNA sample. Hmm. Doc Castle's equipment really isn't set up for that. However, I could employ a semiconductor chip. It could decode DNA using a voltage change instead of light. That would eliminate the use of highly expensive equipment that would be required otherwise. Just read a journal about it, so the information's still fresh. Frankly, it should be easy. What do you want to know about it? The owner's identity. Ah, that's beyond me. All I can get you is the gene code sequence. Well, that's where I come in. I remember this guy, he's like, poses as the janitor, but he's actually some, like, retired Shadowrunner Decker guy. Remember, he was, like... Is that an earpiece? Yeah, it is. Are... Okay. Actually, it's connected to... Or, it's connected to his neck, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it might be just, like, a wire going down. There. Yeah. But he's got, I mean, he's got at least, like, a data jack impl installed and whatnot, so. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, he, he used to be, like, a Decker and Shadowrunner and possibly part of the, some elite group that no longer exists. All right. Dave, right. <clears throat> David, if you can get me that code sequence, I'm pretty sure we can track its owner down via a Matrix run. Will do. Let me have the, let me have the DNA you want to test. Keep frying the blood sample. Flandry... When David gives me the sequence, I'll jack in and help you trace the blood sample back to its source. I just realized that, I mean, that guy's a dwarf. That guy's basically, he's David the Gnome. Did you ever see that show? No. I watched it. It was, I was really little even when I saw it, so, yeah, I probably never heard of it. <laughs> I was hoping for a nice long David the Gnome tangent, but back to Shadowrun. Fla <laughs> Flandry. When David gives me the sequence, I'll jack in and help you trace the blood sample back to its source. Alright. If this works, I'll bring back more than just a sample. <laughs> uh, whose blood is it? Could be the Emerald City Ripper. No track. Turns to Johnny, excited. Wake up, Johnny boy. Got work to do. You already woke him up! <laughs> I think that might be like a slight, like, Error, like, it's like, like, uh, oversight in, like, the dialogue tree or something. Yeah. Oh, well. wake up, Johnny boy. You've got uh, work to do. And Flandry, if you need any gear, I'll be right here. I just got a second wind. Meet you at my rig, Flandry. Ooh, more karma. Let's take a look at my stats. Oh, I've got 19 karma. I really ought to put it to use. Spend some of that, yeah. Do I have a... Yeah, I have a cyber deck myself. Mostly because I already have... And my ninja gear, of course. <laughs> I'd forgotten about that. And that's the deck on my back there, so it's like... Looks like I'm going to go sledding. I was going to say, it looks like you're going to go, like... Dance battle somebody. Also, so except... You got a boombox. Oh, drone combat. Drone control. Ooh, I fight one more drone control. I can equip Class B drones. Ooh, equip two drones. Oh, sorry. all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna be dual wielding Johnny Fives. <laughs> Does it require more AP? I'm guessing so. 
Which means if I had both up and running at one time, Flandry himself wouldn't be able to move. Well, maybe right. You do eventually get more than two AP, so I'll, I'll hold off on that tip now. But I can get the Class B drone. I'm controlling two. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. 